for the people who are going to start their thing. It doesn't matter what your thing is. Like, start it. Like, yeah, it's okay. Absolutely. And let people be a part of that process. It's called building in public. Like, yeah, right. people can respect when you build something in public. Yeah. They watch you grow it in front of their eyes. Nobody can't deny anything. They can't say that's a fake fault. You saw me have zero followers. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. then I was like, oh my gosh, I have 100 followers. Right. And bringing people in to be a part of that journey is so cool because they get to be excited for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And be like, oh my gosh, like, if, if JKD did it, I can do it. If Buzz B did it, I can do it. If Kiana did it, I can do it. You know, yeah. yes, you can do it. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, DJ Busby. And it's your boy, JKD. And from the time you hear the voices, you know it's only Up From Here. It's the Up From Here podcast. And we have an amazing show planned for you today. We have a very special guest in the building. And before we introduce who she is, I just want to say, it's very refreshing that in this day and age where slackness seems to be the primary concern of our community, yep. that a young, aspiring female from of Caribbean descent right. is putting her best foot forward to showcase the you know beauties of our culture, the essence of our culture, and the history of our culture right. to the youth of our generation. Right. So that in itself is astounding, and we said we have to have her as one of our first guests on this new platform. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we have the face of the festival, the face of Caravan, the face of Carnival. We have none other than Kiana Bell. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> that was no such problem. an exciting intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> he doesn't but give you those. So I'm you're good. Don't you're good. You don't deserve those. You're just here. <laughs> you're just here for the ride. <laughs> But anyway, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm how doing, are you doing well. Yeah. So yeah. on 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 your socials, it's not Kiana Bell. What where, where can they find you? Uh, at Kibes, K E Y B E E S. Or for the podcast that I have, where I do talk about that Caribbean history and culture and stuff, where I have those interviews, it's yeah. at In We Blood. Awesome, yeah. In We Blood. So I guess we could start there. Yeah. I mean, you you do have an amazing podcast platform that you've built from the ground up. Mm-hmm. You know, I I don't think has there been any guidance in your path or. I mean, I have some people who have just come as like angels to help me, oh, you know, awesome. I think when you make a decision to do something naturally, you'll have people who kind of just come and help you along the path. Right. Exactly. So I've had some people who have just been brought into my life in like amazing ways to just assist me in terms of like advice or maybe I should do this or that, you know, Um so that's been really, really cool. And I think one of the coolest things about building In We Blood is that I'm doing it in public. Like, it's not a secret, you know? Exactly. The first episode that I have, the camera cut off, like, halfway through. <laughs> I remember I when s- you interviewed me, you were so scared about that. Yo, I remember, I think I put, <laughs> no, that wasn't you. No, listen, I thought the camera was going to overheat. Like, yeah. all these things happen behind the scenes, and it's still it still ends up being like a good overall production. But I think just being transparent about the fact that, Hey, like I'm figuring this out as I go. It kind of lets people feel like, Oh, okay. Like maybe I can do my thing too. And I don't have to feel like I have to start off perfect. You know what I mean? And I think it's so much more relatable when somebody is transparent about, Hey, I'm figuring this out as I go. Right. right? Um, so yeah, just being able to share the journey as I go, like when the episode cut off the first time I posted that on my LinkedIn and like I shared that on Instagram and people were like, Oh yeah, you know, that's how it starts. Or, Oh my gosh, I can't believe you still posted this. Like that's so good on you. And that ended up being one of the most viewed episodes. Mm -hmm. Right. So it it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think as long as there's something of substance, substance and it's relatable, then share your thing, you know? Absolutely. Nice. That's wicked. Now let's you know let's go from key bees into the actual podcast yeah. in we blood. How do you come up with that name? Um, it was God. It was like, God. Yeah, when people ask me that, that's the only thing I can say. Like it was just, and I remember I was going through my journals actually um, earlier this week, and I saw it was like in we blood. Like I just wrote it okay. down. Okay. Um, when the name first came to me, it was for um, kind of showing behind the scenes in the mass cam. Okay, like an idea for a TV show. Right. Um. From the point of, you know, everything it takes to build the mass and everything up until they cross the stage mm-hmm. and all the drama and the excitement and whatever other stuff right. that happens in the mass camp. And I was thinking, oh, in we blood, that would be so cool. I'm like, somebody like take this name and make a show. And then I started realizing, I'm like, how do I want to leverage this face of the festival thing? Like, what do I want to do with this next? Because right. I'm not just going to let this go, yeah. you know? And so when I was on stage at the media launch, I was saying like, you know, I would love to be able to facilitate a conversation around this. I already knew I want to start a podcast, right, but right. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm prepping it. To. <laughs> right. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I would love to be able to start a conversation around this. And then from there, I kind of started launching up the Instagram. I didn't know what to do to build a podcast Instagram, you know, but 
I don't know. I've just been doing it. Yeah. It feels like working yeah. out. Like I'm just putting in reps and it yeah. just, it just keeps growing, you know? So. And that, that's, I think that's amazing. And I must commend you because I, as I mentioned earlier, I did your podcast. You know, you linked me in coming from somebody who went to Tsunami. Yeah. And you said to yourself, I got to interview this guy. Yeah. But I got to say, you truly inspired me when I came and did your podcast because I've been so fixated and on having a team and having a team effort. And, you know, having people delegated to certain tasks. But when I came to your podcast, you literally were doing everything. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm very attention to detail oriented, not to say anybody else's way is right or wrong. Yeah. But like having three camera angles, mm -hmm. like that's my like vision. And until it's to that level of quality, I don't even really put out the content sometimes. But to see that you had one camera, you did everything yourself and you were essentially the producer and host at the same time mm -hmm. was shocking and inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. And it really made me like put my best foot forward with this saying, okay, well, if the guys, you know, can't necessarily be here, how can we adjust, mm -hmm. you know, and seeing you do it by yourself. Like I love, like I love the team being here because the presence that we have yeah. and, you know, just generally black men in a room having these kind of conversations is amazing. Yeah. But if they can't make it, the show must go on. Yeah. So to see you do what you do was an inspiration for me who's been doing this since 2016. Oh, that's so, so cool. So you never know. You never know who you're inspiring. The right? thing that I, I will say to you, though, is if you shift your perspective from, like, maybe your image and the way that you want things to look and instead think about who can this benefit okay. or who can this right. help, who can, I, who can this be of service to? You know what I mean? Exactly. Last time we were talking, I was asking about the tsunami movie. Yeah. <laughs> up to now I don't see no tsunami movie <laughs> well you're late because there's a thousand <laughs> views on it and it's oh, on yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah. oh my god I forgot okay well you released it like last week guy you released it like last week I'm forgiven I'm forgiven <laughs> sorry, sorry. But what, I, what I do love too is what you mentioned earlier and I want to touch back on it because I feel like it's very important yeah. and that's the ability to start something yeah. right just be able to start something even if it's by yourself if you have the vision and the strength to push forward and you know like in your heart, yeah. that it's something rooted in positivity and in order to benefit people. Do it. Get it started and the people will come. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I heard from from a content creator and artist that I like and appreciate watching, La Russell, he was saying something to the effect and, and relating it to like a, a stadium for like basketball. Mm -hmm. The teams don't just show up to that space of land to just play ball. First, they have to build the stadium and then the teams come in and the workers come in and every, the, an infrastructure is now flowing. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that stadium built or even started, those things won't happen. Yeah. And, so. that's the, and that's why I say too, like, yo, when you're starting your thing, like if it's boot, like just, just do it. Yeah. Because you don't want, to, sometimes people think they want to start their thing. They want it to be big from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't want it to be big from the beginning. Because if you make a mistake, if you do something, that's so many more All people that you're going to be yeah. embarrassed or whatever, right? Like if you have two people watching your show, keep going. Next week you might have four and then just keep, going from there and you're you're in your one of my mentors she calls it she says don't skip your developmental season mm -hmm. so it's like when you're in your developmental season you might not want everybody seeing yeah. right yeah. so like take your time and, and build your thing but you have to shorten the gap between the idea in your head and the actual execution or like the taking action of it i think a lot of times we kind of just get stuck in like i have this idea i have this idea i have this idea and all the energy stays in your head and by the time you do go to take the action like all that energy is exhausted yeah. it's like yo like try to shorten that gap I th and i think a lot of people actually fear of making making mistakes which yeah. they don't understand that it is a part of the journey it's yeah. a part of the process because a mistake is more like a lesson yeah you know what i'm saying you learn along the way I saw a really cool graphic the other day and it was showing like winning and the arrow was up to here, yeah. losing and the arrow was up to here, yeah. not trying and the arrow was, was going like, down. Right. So it's like when you don't try, it's like you're getting negative yeah. results, yeah. right? But yeah. even if you try, you make a mistake, you lose, you learn something, there's still that progress that happens. So, you know, next time, you know, next time I'm not going to buy the Sony camera because it yeah. overheats next time. You know what I mean? Exactly. But at least I, I still... And we're, we're loaded with Sony cameras. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking well, about. Well, yeah, I have a Sony camera too. <laughs> but no, we got the, we got the one, like we had to do the research because we had the what, A6300s? Yeah. So podcasters or wannabe <laughs> podcasters stay far away from that one. <laughs> but the 6400s and the 6600, which is the middle one, yeah. those work, uh, work properly. Mm -hmm. But to what you're saying, it's just a matter of, of trying it and the right people will come. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when it comes to that dynamic, it's like if you're walking on the road, 
JKD, if you're walking on the side of the road yeah. and you see somebody pushing something with yeah. all their might, right. mm. naturally, mm. Yep. bro, do you want a hand or something like that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. If people Absolutely. see you're putting in the work and Facts. trying really hard, the right people will come along. Absolutely. Facts. Like you came after the fact of me starting this Del- uh, Delhi Skippy farm. Right. All you guys saw what was happening here right. and just came as a buzz. You want, you want assistance? And that's just how it works. Mm-hmm. So I love to see that, you know, people are helping you in your process. I saw somebody say the other day, I consider him a mentor. He has no idea who I am. I just okay. watch his YouTube videos. His name is Myron Golden. <laughs> okay. One of the things that he said that his dad told him is he's like, people will be more likely to like help you or buy something from you if they feel like you don't need it. Like if they feel like you don't need that help or you don't need that assistance. And I say that to say like, if you see someone on the side of the road pushing by themselves, they're not out like somebody help me, somebody, they're just doing their thing. Then you're going to be like, yo, like, let me help this guy. Or like, let me join in on his mission. Like I see what he's doing and he's pushing, he's putting in work, you know? Exactly that. Now on the flip side of things, because there's always, you know, another side to the coin. As you've started this progression and put yourself out there as a social figure and having a podcast, the flip side of that now is a lot of times what you say may be misconstrued or the content you put out there is very polarizing and there's arguments literally that right. will happen in the comment section Absolutely. or people that will bash you just because you may have said something a little wrong. <laughs> I know it's I know it's already happened to you. I know. So talk about that aspect of podcasting and just being a media personality. In yeah, you have to be ready to take the heat. Like, it actually will Facts. burn your chest. Like, yeah. the first time, the first, yo, my chest was burning me. I was like, yeah. yo, like, it's actually hot. Yeah. Like, my chest is actually hot. So the first time that I kind of got, I realized how, I guess, how much impact yeah. the things that I was posting was having. I think I had a couple hundred followers, maybe, maybe a thousand followers. Um, and I posted a video with Mejia. She was on the podcast and I was like, is it just me? Or like, is like some of the fet culture kind of getting too slack? Like I've been seeing some things and she's like, yeah, like, and they try to come on and say like, it's the culture. It's the culture. She's like, like, stop. That's not the culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I clipped that cause I knew it was controversial. Right. Um, so I'm just thinking about like engagement farming or whatever. And people in the comments were vexed. Like, <laughs> it's the damn culture. And they're saying all kinds of things. These girls are boring in bed. Da, da, da. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, it's wrong. Like, it was just, it, like, the comments started getting so wild. I'm right, like, right. oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, this is like what it feels like to get, I don't know, cyber bullied or whatever. Yeah. You know, you want to just put the phone down, but then you're checking yeah. to see what people are saying still. Yeah. Um, but I would say that you kind of, after it happens the first time, you kind of know how to navigate that. You okay. you kind of know, like, do I want to post something controversial on purpose and, like, be ready for that? Or yeah. am I going to, like, do something more educational or whatever? You know what I mean? But you, once you experience it the first time, then you start to realize kind of how to navigate that. But I saw a post today where they were saying, like, I don't remember what it was, but it was, like, basically, once you put yourself out there, you have to be ready for that. Yeah. You know, the good and the bad. Exactly. You don't want to live kind of like in the shadow of yourself or yeah. something like that just because you're scared of what people are going to say about you. Because on the other side, um, there ended up being somebody in the comments who was like, it's the damn culture. And I ended up interviewing her and we had a great interview. And one of the clips that I posted with her is probably one of our most viewed clips yeah. where she was teaching me how to cuss in Dominican Creole. Oh, wow. <laughs> and yeah. it's so funny because she was somebody who didn't agree with something that I said. Yeah. And again, recently it happened where... Um, I made a statement where I was like, you know, I would love to see some of these bands have like more t-shirt sections or like something, you know? And somebody took that and he was like, we need her out of here. Like get her out of here as the face of the festival. Like, yo, somebody, yo, yo, she needs to resign. Like get this girl out of here. So you feel in the heat now. You, you, you. Yeah. My body got hot again. I'm like, You have to touch the stove to know it's hot. But, but I ended up talking to him and then I ended up having him on the podcast and we had another great episode. And I think just being aware of like, when you're in this space particularly, yeah. our people can be very right. passionate, very loud, right. very... Right. They Vicious. don't necessarily mean like... <laughs> they don't... Because the next day is hug up and, and love up again. But I think just being able to recognize, okay, you know what? This person's actually really passionate. Like, let me see what they're saying. But furthermore, I think it's a testament to the fact that all that's needed is a conversation. Yeah. These literally. quick these quick comments and just getting your yes. opinion out there and bashing somebody when you have no idea who they are. Yeah. 
all it takes is a conversation. And look, you just gave two examples yeah. Yeah. where you had full blown podcasts with these people yeah. or conversations. And there's some of the and it was like, great. Conversation. There's some of the best podcasts too, and like most engaged ones too, yeah. right? And we had so much fun. We're laughing and stuff like that. So just because somebody's coming under your post or whatever, and they're telling you about yourself or about yeah. how much they don't agree with you, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's your enemy. Right. You know. Yeah. And before before we continue from that spot, I just want to to focus on that burning feeling in your chest right when people were i guess making attacks at you or social attacks mm -hmm. at you and you weren't necessarily ready for that no and it kind of just blew up and you're watching it happen and you were dealing with that so i know a lot of young you know aspiring people are going to be watching this mm -hmm. what are some what is some practical advice or how did you get over that shout out to david who I was talking to him, I'm like, yo, these people are dissing me out loud, like I'm getting cyber bullied. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> one thing that he told me that really helped me to flip the way that I was thinking, he was like, yo, like, first of all, like, it's not even real. Like, it's online. These people will never say that to you in your face Big in real life. Hey. And then he was also like, all publicity is good publicity. Yep, and I was true. like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that helped me to feel so much better. Yeah. Cause then I started really thinking about that. And then I was even looking at the friggin' Jada kingdom. Well, I don't know when you're going to post this, so it might be dead by then, but like the Jada kingdom versus Steph London beef. And then I watched how Jada kingdom leveraged that and then used it to promote her next song. I'm like, Oh yeah. Like it's just publicity. Like it doesn't yeah. matter if it's good right. or bad. Like yeah. it's just when the attention's on you, you got to figure out how you're going to use that. But this, right? this is where I respect you more because um, a lot of people like to, to say like you know um respect the culture or this is how we do things but they never actually teach mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying yeah. i feel like what you're doing right now is actually teaching the massive you know yeah. especially you coming from a you know a younger generation yeah. you know what i'm saying and to see you do what you do on your podcast and teach these young young younger generation about our culture amazing i think amazing i think one of the things that i'm very like open about and i think that might be one of the reasons why it's being well received too is like i never try to position myself as an expert i never act right. like yo i'm some sort of historian right. like i know all the cultural my right. thing is kind of like hey like i don't know what's going on either like right. i want to figure it out and right. so when i have these conversations like let me just publicize that and like let's just have this platform where we can all learn and it's not just like i'm hogging it right. for myself so when right. i'm going to grenada and i'm learning about job like here, everybody right. come learn about job. Right. You know, when I'm right. finding out how much it costs for, for Luis Saldina to have his truck in his band. Yeah, $90,000 for, right. for the music truck or whatever. You know what I mean? Like having this type of context and for everybody to be able to find out at the same time. I think it's so cool, you yeah. know? And yeah. I don't want to put myself as some sort of like cultural expert because like if somebody tries to fact check me, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, <laughs> right. I'm sorry, I, I made it up or something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just kind of like, we're all learning, yep. right? Yep. And you, know, I, I personally believe you don't have to be an authority in this space to be able to shed light on certain things or teach. Yeah. You know, you, you could do exactly what you're doing, do all of this raw as you're progressing, mm -hmm. right? And figuring it out and be able to still present a message that's captivating because clearly it's working. Yeah. yeah. Right? You started with, you started literally from zero. Right. Oh, literally. And now you are what? What, like four thousand like, four hundred or something right. like that on but Instagram. Alone. That was just that's just an example of your process being accepted by the general public. I think one of the things too, and this is something that I noticed from the beginning. I was like, "Yo, I have a blue ocean." So, red ocean is when there's like a lot of competition in a certain space. Like blue ocean, I don't. There's nobody else that's really doing do that, know? you know. And if there is, they might not have that video element for things to go viral or whatever, right? So I would say for any like upcoming podcasters or somebody who wants to be sharing that type of content, like just try to have a video element to it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's so much easier for us to connect when we see a person's face yeah. with what they're saying. Um, so yeah. And and you know I know you mentioned that you do a lot of podcasts revolving around carnival and that space. And even internationally, when it comes to things like Juve and Jab, uh, you've had a lot of amazing conversations with esteemed guests and gained a lot of knowledge from that. Yeah. Especially with, with social media today, a lot of people will portray something that may not necessarily be the essence of what it's supposed to be. And then people will look at that and say, well, that's what these guys are doing these days. Like what? For instance, like the slackness we were just talking about earlier. And, and the certain types of music that have come out, people will look at that and say, well, that's Soka today. Mm. But no, we're, like, that's maybe a part of Soka today, but there's a broader picture. Mm. There's much more about where it came from and the, the, 
the beginning stages of it, the beginning stories of how this progressed to where we are today. Yeah. So with that said, what are some of the things that you've learned that you could share in terms of Carnival and learning about the background story of Carnival? I think, well, the one thing that's coming to my mind right now, one of the cool things that I learned that I didn't really know, um, I had Jesse, whose grandfather was a, a Grenadian Calypsonian. He was raised in Trinidad. And one of the things that he was saying is that Calypso is actually protest music. Um, well. Yeah, and there's like a difference between soca and Calypso. Mm. Um, and another thing that he was telling me is one of the things that I was saying, I learned from Dr. Rita Cox at the Toronto Carnival media launch. Mm. She was telling me that we used to send messages through the drums and then the drums were banned and then eventually the steel pan came about. But one of the things that Jesse was saying is he was saying that, yeah, like when those drums got banned, that's when the tambourine drums came about, which is like uh, it originated in Trinidad, I believe. And it's like um, a tambourine. It looks like a tambourine, but it doesn't have the jingles. And he was saying that was so that um, when they were like beating the drum and sending whatever messages or anything like that, like that it could be easily concealed um, and hidden. It's not like the big drums. Mm -hmm. So I think those were some of the cool things that I learned just from like a historic perspective. Um, I feel like when you know that history, even if it's just a small little piece of information, even if it's just your own family's history, like it gives you this certain sense of like empowerment in like knowing who you are. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like you just have that much more like confidence when you move in a space and Absolutely. operate in the world. Like, yeah, like I know who I am. Like I yeah. know who my people are. I know what we're about. And I think that's kind of my mission is to just uncover that through yeah. conversation. Right. What I've noticed about you, like you're really particular in terms of lyrics. How did you notice that? Because I seen uh, it's either uh, you posted it on Instagram, I think. Okay. You were talking about "Cheers for Life," the song. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And how the there was one one lyric that actually like. No, it literally you, makes you, me right. have like <laughs> right. tingles. Right. Yeah. So, is there a song? I guess in this this season that's coming up. That's kind of speaking to you in terms of well, our culture. Our I don't world. really keep up with the soca like no? that. Okay. I'm like a lagger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it might be something that I hear in March or something like that. Okay. But no, okay. I particularly really like voice. Okay. Like I actually really like his music. And like I said in that clip, I feel like he's doing ministry with his music. Right. And right. it's just like, I feel it. Like I feel what he's talking about. I feel what he's saying. Yeah. Something that um, Swipe Impulse was talking about in the interview that I did with him. He was like, one of the things about music that they make in Trinidad, soca music, is it's not necessarily just for the carnival season. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like a lot of the music in Grenada is just like, it's just Spice Mouth season and that's okay, it. And it's that's like it, right. a lot of these songs have long term, you know? The other yeah. day I was listening to Peace of Mind and I was like, bro, like, mm -hmm. this is so true. It's, like, po it's poetic. Because yeah. sometimes you're in a phase of your life where yeah. it's like, yo, yeah. like, just, listen, I, I'm not, like, like, I'm just going. Like, I'm yeah. just, you know, and all these songs hit different at yeah. different times in your I, life. I'll tell you this. Um, this whole week I've been listening to DNA from, from um, uh, Mikhail Teja. Mikhail Teja. Whole week. And it's only because I was just listening to what he was trying to say. Mm. And I feel that song, and please don't take it the wrong way, but I feel like it's bigger than Trinidad Carnival. Okay. Reason why is because it's a sense of feeling for anything that you're going through in life. Yeah. It's not just a, a road experience. Yeah. Like, I feel that song it could be used, like, in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Like, you know when, or even FIFA. I remember, um, you know, the artist Kanan? Or is it Kanan? Where he's like, when I get older, yeah, yeah, I, I will be, be stronger. You see how yeah, that song yeah. got to that level of... Yeah. the world yeah i feel like dna can get to that level mm. that's beautiful and that's fact that because fact. of what he's saying like it just doesn't it just doesn't yeah it's for trina carnival like you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i feel like it's more than that yeah for sure and that, that yeah, yeah i think that's what artists should aspire for yeah. yeah that's what you should try to your best to create you know everybody a lot of people will try to create the party hits or the road march mm. yeah soko monarch whatever but like for instance, sometimes even when you're not even thinking about those things is when yeah. the quicker they'll get through. Yeah. yeah. Like Hard Fit last yeah. year by yeah. Bungie. He wasn't thinking about but, it. Yeah. The party was literally called Hard, Hard Fet. Right. He was doing it for the Fets. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but it won Road March just because of the power and strength of the song. Right. So if you root it again in just putting your best foot forward and thinking outside the box, right? 
and as a DJ, as you just mentioned, yeah. it's hard sometimes going through all these songs and there's just no content. Right. It's senseless right. and it's just stupidity. Even the nasty business has like a line of thinking in it. Right. <laughs> all this stuff is just like, what are you guys, what, like you spent time doing this. Right. Yeah. And money. I don't get it. And money. I don't understand, but think broader than the carnival. Right. I get it. There's money to be made. Mm -hmm. I understand. But what JKD said is so powerful. Yeah. If you even just extract that no place like home part. Yeah. That exactly. could be blanketed and used everywhere. everywhere. Absolutely. I was just watching an interview with Bungie talking about, um, I think it was either different, no, Truck on the Road. Okay. Was in Fast and Furious. Oh, wow. Or in Fast oh, and wow. Furious commercials okay. or something like that. Right. So he's still getting... A residual off there. Right, right. His music made it to house or whatever oh, on wow. t on national TV. Wow. Um, differentology. His his music was in a commercial for something right. that's still playing till today. This is crazy. Right. Right. But right. but he probably he's always the artist that looks beyond yeah. okay, I need a hit for this or I right. need a hit for that. He right. just uses his creativity and makes art. Right. So, yeah. so especially where job is concerned like i want to touch on that because i know that was a passion project of yours to even yeah. go to grenada yeah and just dive yourself in the culture and, yeah. and have conversations you had one in particular i can't remember the gentleman's name ian ian but you had that conversation regarding job mm -hmm. and the roots of their juve in grenada and whatnot and there was a sort of distaste when he was talking about how it's portrayed today on socials, right. you know, like the pig heads mm -hmm. and the snakes and the, right. like maybe some of that was involved, but he seemed like he had a distaste for it. Yeah. And then when he really broke it down, he was like, none of that was originally mm -hmm. in job. Mm -hmm. And it's all of this, this, these social media experiences that are skewing the vision of what it's supposed to be in the essence of it. So maybe you like expand on that a little yeah, bit. Yeah. That's actually a really big point of contention. Um, there was even just last night I was having a conversation where there was this guy who's a historian and he basically was on stage like pontificating that like, oh, like jab is the devil. Um, but not, oh, wow. not, I don't think he was saying it in a negative way. Yeah. I think he was saying it from like a historian perspective. Somebody posted on social media and I watched the video on mute and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I have this guy's book highly recommend so yeah. good whatever whatever and then ian messages me he's like yo i see you commenting on this guy's thing we just took 10 steps back like what's this, like what's this guy saying and i'm like yo that's the last time i comment on a post without listening to what they're saying um but i and and that's what i was saying last night is i was just like there's about three different perspectives on this there's the one side where it's like okay there's the traditional job like what ian was saying then there's a side where it's like very like church side where it's okay. like no like is the devil like don't participate right. in that and then there's the other side where it's like actually the snakes and the pig heads and all that stuff are part of it because we're trying to make people uncomfortable we're trying to scare them and so i'm just like yo so my whole thing is i'm trying to figure out what the truth is so i can yeah learn and i can share it with people you know what i mean so i'm like what is the truth um so that's even a conversation that i was having last night where it's just kind of like because so much of what we do and what we did was not documented or not documented well because everything was like oral. Um, it's tough Broken to figure out. Basically. It's it's tough to figure out like, yo, what's actually the truth. Yeah. So yeah. even up until last night, it was just like, yo, this guy's saying something else and he has a platform. You're saying this and you yeah. had a platform. So it's like, yeah. what's, what's, what's what? Yeah. Exactly. And that's where all everything kind of and then that's when the arguments up. and all the, sorry that's exactly. when the arguments and all those things start up right like yeah. it's the culture like the slackness and all that stuff <laughs> is the culture well i mean like on one hand yeah it probably is and then on the other hand it's kind of like but is it really yeah you know so well, let, let, okay i want to have this conversation this is a very <laughs> it's a very important conversation to have and it's not for the arguments in the comment section or anything like that jaron what's your take when it comes to the slackness of soka today <laughs> I I would say that it has increased definitely from when I started fed in. Yeah. Um I feel that the newer generation now they are misconstrued with whatever like social media is putting out there and it doesn't have to it doesn't have to even do with soca. It just everything else and they're bringing that into what our culture is and they're calling it culture it's so crazy 
Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So like I... you have things like the shade room. You have things like um just certain blog sites that people like that TLC our young stuff. generations are TikTok. Like I feel like they're taking influ- they're taking elements from that and bringing it into our culture and they're calling it our culture mm. kind of a thing. If you know what I if you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So I personally think that it, it definitely has increased. And I feel like they just don't understand from where we're coming from as the older generation and what they're per- portraying. If you don't. So, so you're not profiting off the slackness? <laughs> not at all. Like, this, that's a I good just, question. I just, I just said this is not to be taken in a... We're just having an open conversation. Here. Daddy's for Buzz Me. Daddy's for Buzz Me. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Let, let's have an she open conversation like- here, okay? <laughs> now my my two sons before we get into yeah, yours, because yeah, yeah. you're you know? Yeah. My two sons. Has the vulgarity increased? Absolutely. Yeah. Can it be toned down? Absolutely. My opinion on it is it's a creative form to, for an artist to express themselves, right? Is the slackness something that's new in music no no period not. as a matter of fact the calypsos and the sokas of of the 90s and whatnot yeah. and bef- even before that mm-hmm. yeah there's so many innuendos and and, yeah. and moments where they'll take something and twist it but it's not just vulgar vulgar right mm-hmm. push right. your hand or something. it's right. not vulgar right right okay right. but it's right. been around since forever yeah You're right and if we really want to talk vulgar if I pulled up some of the lyrics on some dance hall songs right now right. and like really showed you guys what they're like majority of them it's are saying same, yeah. that, that I pull from that demographic of, of dance hall, yeah. it's no, it, sometimes it's worse. Right. But that's accepted and praised and, and I wouldn't, I, maybe not praised, but it's accepted and people make literally yeah. events out of that. Yeah, you're right. So it's been around. This is nothing new. I think it's just a new age where people are trying to express themselves in their own way. There's creative expression that you have as a, as a an individual, right? Sure. With social media these days, anybody could be an artist. Right. Kiana could pick up Pro Tools right, right. now, right. thing around a few things right. and export an MP3 <laughs> and put it on SoundCloud <laughs> music. and say whatever she wants, <laughs> right. right? But it's just the reality of where we are in the world right now. Yeah. And as it gets bigger, yeah, we could have these conversations to say, maybe we could tone it down. Yeah. That work your muscle okay we could tone it down a little bit but you know what's so crazy about it it's fun it sounds so good it sounds it sounds great it sounds freaking fantastic but again to each their own right right like i i could understand where certain people would would not like it yeah because soka's always been a happy and positive music and right now it feels like it's being changed but Mm -hmm. and i think that's what it is it's because like yo dancehall you know dancehall they're gonna be having their concepts that they've been talking about but for me it's like Wait, Soka never used to be so in your face like that? But that's double standards, right? And that's what we were talking about last time. But like you were saying, they used to have like the innuendos and whatever stuff like that. But also after I had a conversation with JL, she was the one who said it's a damn culture. She was talking to me more about like bouillon music and how the subgenre of bouillon music is called nasty business. And that's literally just what they talk about. Like it's its own genre of music. Yeah. And they just, she said it started out of these guys feeling like, um, like they were like the black sheep and they were unheard and they wanted to find a way oh, wow. to like get that attention and yeah. express themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it clicked. And, uh, like sex exa- sells, like it actually does. Li- right. I was about to say, if you see it's working, why would you stop? Yeah. yeah. There's going to be a demographic for whatever. Yeah. No matter what there is, there's going to be people that want whatever that is. Yeah. Right. And if you have a large demographic of people that are saying, yeah, the beat's nice yeah it's maybe vulgar but we mess with it still Mm. they're gonna keep making it and a lot of these guys if you really think about it maybe they've spent years before that trying the traditional route yeah and when you're an artist you have to spend money to to produce these things these things don't come cheap so if you're doing that constantly and it's not working but you're still passionate about being an artist Mm. and you you change your your lingo in the song and all of a sudden now what the vulgarity that you're speaking of is working mm. you're just gonna keep doing what's working right. of course and that's the the peoples have spoken is mm. what i'm trying to get at but in my opinion yeah i think it could be a little less vulgar than it is getting right. and is mm. but it's been around 
I don't understand why we have a moral high ground now <laughs> because it's soca. <laughs> like, no, that to me that doesn't make sense. Right. And there's people that clearly like it, so why not? Yeah. You know. But like, how long do you think that will last? That's my thing. But that that's the thing, though. Everything has its phases. Yeah. Everything True. has its, its period of time. It's moment in time. Yeah. Like we had the island pop, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like we had um, a stage where Beijing music was the top of the top, right. etc. Right. So I think it just has its time right now. Right. Who knows? Could go on forever. Could be the next year that it switches. Yeah. You never know. True. You know. So Probably it's just a season. Yeah, it could be just a season. It's a fun season, nonetheless. Yeah. And like when I the clip when I was talking, I was not necessarily referring to the music. She was talking about the music, so I was just like, yeah. Right. I was referring to some of the stuff that people were doing. So like you were mentioning, where you're seeing things go up on social media right. or whatever. Like, yeah. why did when when I started getting concerned was when I saw some outdoor kind of feds, probably in the states somewhere, and these guys had whipped cream. I'm like. <laughs> Whipped like, cream. Well, then. I was like, yo. <laughs> you sure it was a buzz? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I don't even like whipped cream. This, I, was like, this I was like, yo, this is this has gone super far. Yeah, that's gone that's, super far. I seen man lifting up woman on his face. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Like I and know. I was telling my mom, I'm like, I'm like, am I wrong for thinking this? Like, am I just getting like turning into an old woman or something? She's like, no, like I don't think it's that bad. Like <laughs> Like, it's just, it's like, it's fine. Like, I just, I feel like you can do anything. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where the boundary is. Right. But I mean, I don't know where the boundary is. And, and all I'm saying too is you can't be the one in the comments talking about Soka is too slack right now. But the moment you hear a dung and a ya, dung and a ya, you're, you're skinning out. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So please, if you're that person, stop it now. Whoa, let me Otherwise, hurry up and leave. We could have this conversation. We could have this conversation. Let's let's have a wholesome conversation. It's so 2024. Let's talk. That is so funny. So yeah. yeah, no, I don't know. Sometimes it just used to feel like Soko was like the break from that. You know, like oh, a happy and yeah. <laughs> facts. You know, but like I guess like you're saying, it's kind of like all the music evolves. It all has its seasons. It all has its concepts. Like at the end of the day that type of music is just part of life. Like it's pe what people are doing anyway. Yeah. So if you're going to sing about it, okay, fine, whatever, you know? True. But I think my concern is sometimes some of the things that I'm seeing in Fets where I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm like, yeah. right. it's like, are we, like it's what happens when we start publicizing this and people start seeing this thinking that that's all that it is. Then you have these American people coming yeah. in and thinking that is some kind of sex fest and it's like, they don't, they don't know who Marshall is. They don't know this artist. They don't know any of the songs. They're just coming there thinking it's some kind of dry hump fest. Sorry. And this, this, it, that's, one of the fundamental issues with that. So yeah. that, again, is something we're having this conversation. Let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Right? Um, but yeah, I, I think we could close off on that. Yeah. One thing that's very, you know, big about you, obviously, and you said that you wanted to leverage what I'm about to talk about mm -hmm. is you becoming the face mm -hmm. of Carnival. Now, one, how did you even get involved with that to win it? And two, what advice would you give the next person that wants to be that as well? Yeah, so um, when I was going to apply to be the face of the festival, I had like this doubt in my mind because I was like, I'm not even in like the carnival culture behind the scenes like that. Like, how am I going to get them to acknowledge me? And mm. I was like, what's an angle that I can take that nobody else is taking? So I watched other people's videos. I was like, okay, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. And I'm like, what can I do to differentiate myself? Yeah. So I started talking about, the cultural significance of carnival and how i heard somebody say that it's like um a legacy or an inheritance from our ancestors that's passed on and it's like a legacy that we carry on so i kind of took that angle and it resonated um and then they selected me the piece of advice that i would give to anyone else coming in is that it is what you make it right. um so you have to think about what you want to do how you want to share what you're doing on platforms to get more opportunities like me going on breakfast television that came about because I posted that I got selected as the face of the festival on LinkedIn and I posted the picture and stuff. And I was like, I'm so excited, whatever. And a producer from breakfast television, I guess, cause people, the LinkedIn algorithm is very friendly. Right. So yeah. I guess from people liking that and stuff like that, a producer from breakfast television ended up seeing it. And she reached out to me. She was like, Oh, Hey, like I would love to have you on the show and come on and whatever, whatever. And so that opportunity came through me doing stuff. It didn't yeah. come from, Toronto Carnival wow, setting that up you know great, what I mean yeah. so it's like how are you gonna push what you're doing you yeah, have to think about right. that and then how are you gonna leverage it into something else because you have all this attention on you so how are you gonna leverage that momentum what are you gonna do with it nice yeah and I love what you did with it yeah. thank you uh, so how did that feel you know like that moment when you knew okay I'm gonna be the face of Carnival how did yeah. that feel uh, 
dog. Yeah, I can Girl. imagine. <laughs> the next day, the next day I was watching, um, I think I was just so overwhelmed with emotions because I was like, oh my gosh, like they actually chose me. And I was watching, what's it called? Becoming a Queen. Uh. Where it's like the, the carnival documentary and stuff like that. And I started thinking about how so many of us are connected to this carnival thing and this ecosystem from the artists to the people who make masks, all these people behind the scenes, the masqueraders and all. And I, I actually started crying. I was at home. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I don't think we realize like how much this thing is like connected. It's like, a, it's like a real thing. You know what I mean? Right. And so many of us are connected in, in our, in, in our own ways. And we each have our part to play to make this thing beautiful and awesome and bring it back every year through the fight up through whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just like really just hella emotional. Honestly. I cry easy, so <laughs> but yeah, I was I was like really emotional about it because I was like, wow, like the fact that even though I wasn't necessarily in the behind the scenes of the carnival ecosystem or anything like that, like I still expressed myself in a way that resonated with people, like on a real level. Awesome. You know? Yeah. So I thought that was cool. Amazing. And you being, you know, as I said, a young female in the of, of Caribbean descent, uh, there's a lot of those, especially where we live, right? Yeah. And just giving a sense of of guidance to them. You know, they may have that idea. It may not be the face of Carnival. It may not be a podcast. But they may have that idea that they want to push forward with. First of all, like, what are some of the challenges that you've faced as a female in the in a business, you know, where either sometimes it may feel dominated by men, but at the same time, there's a lot of issues that you would face, particularly because of because of being a female. So what have you dealt with or anything negative that you've dealt with? And what advice would you give? I don't really think I've dealt with anything negative. I see being a woman as a super plus. Absolutely. Right. Men are just willing to help me. Right. Other women yeah. are willing to help me. Like, Bucks. and just work together. Maybe it's because just like the energy that I put out that people are more kind of receptive to like, yeah, yeah like, you know, she was good vibes or whatever. Yeah. Um, I haven't really faced anything. I would just say that follow your intuition. Gotcha. Like it's not gonna it's not gonna lead you in the wrong direction. I yeah. promise you, once you listen to that first mind that the thing that you wanna do, just just do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that for me, a big part of everything that I do is prayer mm -hmm. and following my intuition. Because I feel nice. like that's the voice of God that's telling me like what to do next. Right. You know? Yeah. So I just do that. I was having a conversation yesterday where I was like or actually earlier today where I was like when you're doing your thing and you're building your thing, and I'm sure you guys can attest to this with whatever, you know, initiatives that you guys have going on. I know you have the DJ network coming up soon, yeah. but it's like, you don't see the whole path in front of you. You right. don't see the whole staircase in front of you. It's just like, you just see the next step. Right. So don't think that the whole path is going to be lined up and you're going to know everything, how to get right. from A to Z. You're not going to know. You're just going to know this is the next step. Yeah. And then this is the next step. And this is where I want to go. And then this person came into my life and helped with something. And this person, I was able to help them with something. And then it, you're not going to see the whole path. So embrace that, like yeah. that uncertainty. Facts. And that's always been my thing. Like even just in regards to DJing, if I'm in a party, I would much rather be looking at a hot female DJing <laughs> than Buzz B. Like <laughs> definitely I want to see her up there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's so many pluses and superpowers, as you mentioned, with where a female is concerned. But then you have conversations like, I believe it was Taraji P. Henson. Yeah. Did you see that recently? Yeah. Yes where you know she was complaining about like the pay gaps yeah. and mm -hmm. the things that female entrepreneurs do have to face which you know was unfortunate but i was just trying to see if you had any mm -hmm. issues but as time goes on these things come up too right For yeah. sure. so you do have to be aware everybody out there that's listening you have to be aware that these things are are here mm -hmm. yeah right and move accordingly but i feel yeah. like once i don't know my mindset is just like bro like i could just there's no limits yeah. you know yeah. what yeah. i mean yeah. and like tunnel vision right yeah. Yeah, like, like get it done. Yeah. Like hundred percent. And I think naturally like you'll connect with the people who are also like that. And it's unfortunate because sometimes the people who might not necessarily be like that, who've yeah. been in your life before might not necessarily be there when you start on your journey. So I think that's also something to be prepared for. Like when you really lock into wanting to do something, yeah. there might be people who have been there the whole time that all of a sudden it's like, yo, it's not gonna work anymore. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can't drag everybody with you where you want to go if they're not like stepping on pace with you sometimes you just gotta be like all right yo don't know like mm. you know right but yeah i hear that let's go back to in we blood uh, um yes <laughs> i want to know like the reason and behind why you went to grenada um i went to grenada so that i could interview ian 
So that was the, that was the main reason. That was the reason why I went to Grenada. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, that was the reason why I went to Grenada. Um, Shireen Taylor, who's a writer, filmmaker here in Toronto, she went to Grenada and I, when she came back, she had a phone conversation with him and turned it into an article. And she was like, I got so much from having that conversation okay. with him. Like I could turn it into so many things. I follow his organization on Instagram. It's called Jambalasi Grenada. Okay. I don't remember what happened, but again, that same intuition, whatever, following your mind. Um, and I was in conversation with the social media manager. And then I eventually ended up being like, yo, like I want to come out there and, and talk, okay. talk to him. Right. So when, you know, what can we do? And yeah. then it just ended up being this like blessed, amazing thing where I got to go and be in like the jab capital. He took me to Lafayette St. Andrews, which is like the real jab wow. capital. And I got to be in these spaces that I would have never been in otherwise. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I went there to talk to him and then I was like, okay, well, I'm already here. Like, let me see what other interviews I can set up. So nice. then I got to talk to the producer of, um, I don't know if you guys, well, you guys are DJs. So chopping the line, I don't have impulse. Oh, yeah. So I, I talked to impulse, um, production swipe impulse. Cause it's two of them in impulse production. Um, yeah, I was supposed to have more interviews, but it just didn't end up working out. And was like, yo, I'm here for seven days. Like, I want to well, have fun, too. You still you made know? the best of it. Yeah. That's and awesome. and it's nice because I was able to get something out of that trip. I was able to get that refresher right, of being home. Right, I was right. able to get that culturally immersive experience with Jab and Jab culture. And then I was able to get that interview and to share it. It's so funny. I just showed my grandmother it today. She was like, your leg was itching on in that interview? I'm like, she's like, well, sandfly was biting you? I'm like, no. I told you bring that cream. I told you. <laughs> I'm like, no. I like, you, you keep itching your leg. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh, I don't know. Like, maybe I was nervous or something. Right, like, right, I don't know. Right. So I don't know if we touched on it. What is, what is your descent? So my mom's side is Grenadian. Got you. Um, yeah. And my dad's side is Bayesian and Guyanese. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Bayesian and Guyanese. Yeah. So we talked about Grenada. Mm -hmm. Yep. What have you learned, especially with, with you having roots in these places, about Barbados and Guyana? Um, Guyana, Kaicho Falls. <laughs> That's about it. My grandfather used to have us burn that DVD. Come, Anya, come, come. I can't even do a Guyanese accent, but like, come sit on and watch this video. Oh my gosh, grandpa, I've seen this so many times already. Like, come, come sit on. Like, he was just so proud of that. His Actually, his mother was Buck Indian, so that's like native Indian and Guyanese. Okay. So it's just a lot of mix-up. Yeah. Um, and then... Barbados, I only went in 2007. I'm just closer with my my mom's, like, Grenadian side. Because since I was a child, I would be going to Grenada. Like, I think the first time I went to Grenada, I was three years old. Yeah. And we would go every summer for the whole, for the entire month of August. And so oh, wow. I, was, okay. I even went to school in Grenada at one point, I think, from, like, three to four years old. Oh, wow. Okay. For, like, a year. So, like... That's just my place. And my grandfather always gets so mad because he's like, you're always talking about Grenada. How come you never say anything about Barbados? <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's the future of In We Blood? Like, do you plan on, you know, just like how you went to Grenada, do you plan on taking this to Bar Barbados, to a Grenada? I would absolutely love to be able to go to different islands and have conversations with like the elders or okay. the culture keepers or the people who have specific cultural knowledge and yeah. have conversations with them. Yeah. Even when we look at languages across different parts of the Car um, Caribbean, like... Yeah. Creole or Patois in Trinidad is dying out. Patois in Grenada is dying out. Yeah. Having conversations with these people about, you know, like, yo, what's a one, two? Like, how do I say this? How do I say that? Yeah. And just have that documented. Talking about just different things that we don't hear in the music. You know, I feel like the music is something that, like, it, like, hypnotizes us. And it's not a bad thing. You know right. what I mean? Like, right. these concepts that we're constantly hearing. So I think it would be so cool. Eventually, this has nothing to do with Inui Blood, but I think it would be really cool if we started hearing artists start sing about concepts that are related back to the culture and just like foundational things. Right, right. I think it would be really nice to be singing those songs right. too, you yeah, know? Yeah, um, but yeah, I would love to be able to travel to different islands and have these conversations and to just share that. Cause again, remember I'm learning too. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is that I'm learning and I'm sharing it as I go. Right. So with that said, where would you be most excited to go next? Trinidad. Trinidad. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you've never been? No. I'm, yeah. Like I passed through to yeah. go to yeah. Grenada. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Did you get the KFC? Yeah. Nah, don't count it, don't count it. Yeah, yo, before, before people in the comments start going crazy. Yeah. yeah, like, you know the problem that happens, guys, is when somebody overhypes something. Yeah, yeah. You know someone someone overhypes something, and then in your mind, you make it like, yo, and then you try it. She's not about to start this debate. And it can oh, never no, no, no. be 
It can never oh, be as wait. big as your mind made it. I'm not talking I, I, about I anything the in particular. <laughs> I see why the people is going crazy. You about to say kids? I'm not about. talking about anything in particular. Don't try to put words in my mouth. I'm just trying to find all out I'm what we're talking about. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, sometimes people will hype something up, and then you start getting hype in yeah, your yeah, mind, right. so you're ready, and then you're yeah. like, yo, this is basic. <laughs> like, yo, why they hype? That's why I always try to underhype stuff. Like, just be like, yo, you know what, like. It's not even that good. Like, yo, know, like lower your expectation. I love to tell people to lower their expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to tell people to lower their expectations yeah. because then when they do have whatever they have, it's yeah. going to be good. Okay. If I, if something's overhyped, you know, people say under promise over deliver. Mm. Just, say it, this just, just, this just keep the under promise over deliver in your mind with anything that you want to do. Right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Boom. Business 101 people. Business 101. That's it. That's so, it. So Trinidad, that's awesome. And essentially you want to go everywhere and make that a thing. Um, yeah, I think that would be friggin' amazing. Like it would be. Like so cool. It will be. Yeah, so it will cool. be. Oh, yeah. thank you. If you thought about it, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, yes. right. You gotta get there. It's only up from here. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be the intro. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. So besides podcasting, you know, um, Actually, even with that realm, because that's one of the main reasons we brought you here, right? Yeah. We, we've been doing this so long, since 2016. And to see somebody else, especially in the local space of Soka, yeah. that's taking on the role that you're doing, right? Uh, what dreams do you have for the podcast, obviously, besides what we just talked about? But even in terms of, like, let's say, monetizing it. Yeah. Because, like, a podcast is a big thing, but you need capital to grow it right? yeah so i'm i'm having some conversations next week about potentially bringing on some sponsors sure. yeah. um so i have no idea how to navigate that just like you know exactly. i'm learning yeah. it as i go i'm yeah. having conversations with people who do know yeah. i'm i'm leveraging their expertise to try to figure out how to position myself and there's nothing wrong with doing that like right. even if you don't know how to do something find somebody who does know how to do it right. and talk to them and figure out what you need to do to position yourself because it's not to say just because you don't necessarily know the realm of sponsorships or the realm of podcasts or whatever it is that you want to go into. It doesn't mean that you can't like come in there and, and, and you know, right. yo, everything is marketing. Like how are you yeah. going to market and brand yourself? Absolutely. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be having some conversations next week and like, let's just see what happens. I don't really like to to talk my things before they're set because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like early stage, right. you know, you don't want to, yeah. But yeah, like let's let's just see what happens. Let's yeah. see what happens. So has this has this created any new dreams for you? Uh like obviously no. besides podcasting in the face of carnival. Um no, no. No. Um I think I've always kind of had like a bunch of different visions that are yeah. kind of all still connected to that in We Blood p- platform and really just building out more than just a podcast, but like a community space. I would love to have offline um events or like workshops and stuff you know what i mean there's so many things that are connected to the culture like come for the inly blood parata making workshop featuring (laughs) this chef or the steel pan workshop or whatever you know so i think it would be really cool to be able to take that brand let it live online and have its online element but also have an offline element too right i think that would be really 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 cool yeah nice absolutely and kicking back to online you've had a lot of interviews wicked interviews what's your favorite and why and don't say, don't say this guy just because he's here. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't please. say that. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad the camera wasn't on here right now. She just went so, she just went so. Uh, what do I mean? What do I mean? She just went. Boy. I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. Who was your favorite and what? Um, you know, I think my favorite interview was the first one. Okay. Because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And Mm. I still did it anyways. Awesome. And I put that out there. And I'm proud of myself for that. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one. one of your highest views. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Which is so crazy because it's like, this was bootleg as hell. (laughs) And you guys are messing with it. So say less. Makeshift. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine once you actually figure it out. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I say like, for the people who are going to start their thing, it doesn't matter what your thing is. Like, start it. Like, it's okay, and let people be a part of that process. It's called building in public. Like, people can respect when you build something in public. They watch you grow it in front of their eyes. Nobody can deny anything. They can't say that's a fake fault. You saw me have zero followers. You know, Mm -hmm. then I was like, oh, my gosh, I have 100 followers. And bringing people in to be a part of that journey is so cool because they get to be excited for you. Absolutely. And be like, oh, my gosh, like, if if JKD did it, I can do it. If Buzz B did it, I can do it. If Kiana did it, I can do it. You know, yes, you can do it. 
It's only one God. That's what I always say. Yo, it's only one God. Right. I don't think there's anybody that's more or less than me. You right. know, right. I think sometimes we put people on this and that maybe us here. Right. No, yeah. it's just this. Yes. Yep. It's just this. And there's people who take action and people who don't. don't. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. That's it. And you mentioned you mentioned God a few times in this podcast. Of course, must. No, what what's obviously there's an importance there for you, but what what is that for you, and and where did that come from, right? Like, who brought, who instilled that in you? Like for me, I could say my mom definitely is the one that mm. that ingrained that in me. Right. Mm. But what's the, what's the full important? Like, dive into that. What's the importance of God in your life, and who really brought that into your life? Pastor Jacob, he's listening, huh? <laughs> Pastor. I'm not I have I I don't know if I can say it's really one one per like I didn't really really grow up in like a like a super church family or anything gotcha. like that. I think I just developed my own relationship, relationship yeah. and like understanding of God and like the way that I've seen things work out in my life. And so for example, your podcast is called Up From Here. When I was in my fourth year in university, I was pregnant with my son who's now three years old and all i remember thinking is like you know i just want to graduate i just want to graduate i just want to graduate like i would just say things over and over like god like yo just help me yeah. to graduate and it's like i seen so many things in my life where it's like the hardships and stuff and you come out of it and it's like oh yeah. like that needed to happen okay. yeah. you know but it's not because like i went to church or because my mom like made me read the bible or anything like that like that's just something that i did on my own and i realized that when you live your life and you let god take the lead and i've been practicing using my intuition for like 10 years i remember being in high school and thinking like yo like which one is in my intuition like is it the first one is it the one where i'm overthinking <laughs> anyways but i think i'm saying all that to say that when you like really understand just kind of like everything is energy and yeah. just 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 the 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 non physical side of things and you kind of tap into that not in a weird way but just right. in a, like that's just what is right um i think it makes i feel like i'm blabbering i feel like the people who who are gonna get what i'm saying are gonna feel it but yeah. that's usually how it goes yeah <laughs> like, i don't know too. what the hell this girl is saying right now but somebody's gonna understand what she's saying no no, no but but like but honestly, it's just having a personal relationship with God. Like, I'm always journaling, like, thank you, God, for this. Or, like, can you guide me in this? Yeah. Or, and one of my favorite prayers, one of my favorite prayers, everybody right now. I don't pray for anything specific. Yeah. Sometimes people will pray, like, yo, like, God, like, yo, help me to get this podcast. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't do that. Because I notice sometimes when you pray for something specific, that's not even the thing that was supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Then you pray for that and mash is doing something yeah. else. Yeah. or what. <laughs> but it's like, I just pray for whatever is best. Relax. I just pray for whatever is, I'm like, yo, whatever is best. If something flops, if what, I'm like, okay, well, that's whatever is best. Yeah. It helps me yeah. to have so much more confidence, too, because it's yeah. like, well, everything's just working out for me anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and to be honest, everything is on God's time. Like, you know, Amen. And you may be wanting to do something right now and God's saying, no, wait, like, you know, I'll do it, but you got to wait for that. Amen. It's not the right, it's not the right moment. Right. So everything is God's time. Man. Amen. For sure. True. And you touched on something um, about being grateful and being thankful. Mm -hmm. That's extremely important. You know, mm -hmm. one thing I heard from, from Steve Harvey, I saw some clip of his and he mentioned like, let's just say you're at a point where you're at ground zero and you're yeah. praying for this this million dollars or something like that. Yeah. But then you get to the 50,000 and then you're, okay, wicked. But how do I get to the million? No yeah. thanks but at the 50. No thanks at the 50. Mm -hmm. So why would God bless you with more yeah. if you yeah. can't even be thankful for that Preach. little bit he brought you far, right? Yeah. Listen, and I learned I'm, that like, too. Yeah. It's like a real... I learned that is a real thing. Because yeah. I remember doing things for people and getting no thanks and being like... If you like, yeah. you know, like you literally feel when you do something and you get no thanks. It's like, I'm not doing nothing for you again. Yeah. So then I realized, yo, like, how does God feel when I don't have no thanks yeah, for right. whatever? And for example, on the flip side, when you do a small thing and somebody's like, yo, thank you so much. Like, whatever, whatever. You feel so good. Like, yeah. yo, yeah. like, okay, I'll do something else. I'll do yeah. that. Like you, you're always saying thanks. Like you're always showing love. You know Gratitude. what I mean? Gratitude. Yeah. yeah. So Gratitude. just thinking about like the micro macro, it's like all, it's all one thing, you know, yeah. it's all the same thing. So. Absolutely. And, and when it comes to, you know, this space, especially because this is foreign territory where we're concerned. Soka really knows like a, a general radio, <laughs> music, fets and, and whatnot but this podcasting situation is something i think we're new at yeah. yeah right especially in this space and people won't really value it until i would say in hopefully in the near future but people right now aren't valuing this space as much as i think they should mm. yeah 
right? And especially when you guys see people coming here to try to promote the positive aspects of just life in general, but our culture, mm-hmm. that's something to champion. Right. That's something, you know, I would encourage all of you guys to get behind. And when you see In We Blood, when you see Key B's post, when you see Busby JKD in the Up From Here podcast, it is very free to support us. Yeah. Absolutely. Literally, even if you don't watch, I, and I'm not saying this <laughs> just to swing by and click like. Right. Yeah. If you don't watch what you're seeing, but you see us and you mess with us, right, and you just see us pass on your your feed, yep. just hit the like button because it helps the alg- algorithm push it out to more people. Right. When we reach a certain level of likes, comments, shares, etc. So beyond liking, if you when you watch it, just leave a little two cents on the bottom. Don't right. attack us for what we're saying. <laughs> But just leave your two cents. Yo, if you want to attack, it's still engagement. Yeah, you know? It oh, is. Like. True. And, and, and strangely enough, that's the one people will fix it up. Right. And right. focus on. And that right. becomes a tabloid. Yeah, but yeah. just leave a comment. Yeah. yeah. If you like what you saw, share it with somebody. Yeah. All of these things are free, literally free ways that take seconds that you could help out what we're doing in this culture. Absolutely. Because as we, we've touched on a few times, our culture is portrayed right now as slackness, drama, and anything in those regards. Yeah. But if you see people doing positive, you know, guys, like it's free. Just yeah. help us out. Give us a little double tap. That's all we're asking. I have a question. What's up? What do you guys want to do with Up From Here podcast? Like, where do you want to take that? I literally think that it's what the name suggests. And it's just going to keep going that way. Because mm. when I, like, if you asked me this question about like DJing, for instance, mm. 10 years ago, yeah. I would have never told you all the things I'm doing today. So to to look at something and say this is necessarily what I want it mm. to be, I can never predict that. Exactly. So I'm just gonna just let it rise. But that's what I'm saying. Like once you can't once see we the whole path. exactly. Yeah. But once I I firmly believe once you root it in positivity and benefiting others and helping others, mm-hmm. it will just naturally grow. Yeah. That's what I always yeah. say too. I'm like people can feel when you're doing something for yourself yeah. and your own clout and whatever yeah. versus when you're doing something to be of service to others, right? right? Like. Who do you want to help and yeah. how can you inspire other people? And like, what is the impact that you want to have? I just, I just feel like, um, especially with this podcast, like, and or just in life in general, like we were put on this earth for a purpose. And the mm-hmm. purpose is to help one another. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like even with this podcast, like we can take this into the next level. It, it may help somebody who's struggling with finance. It may help somebody who's struggling with um a divorce they're going through yeah. something you know as long as it's moving so, the pin forward yeah that's all i really care about yeah. okay, and like, so. d- in, in line with what you're saying the the messages that we get sometimes mm-hmm. it's one it's some of the most heartwarming things that i could read yeah Trust and just me. seeing like oh you guys talking about this literally changed my life right mm-hmm. you guys talk like i shifted the way i do things because of what you guys said on this podcast mm-hmm. And even if that touches the life of one or two people, just getting that message, yeah. as hard as it could be looking at your stuff and seeing, you want to see a million likes. Mm-hmm. Right. You want to see a million views, all these things. But getting those little messages, it just makes it all so much more rewarding. Yep. Absolutely. And it, it, that to me is really where I want to take it. Like my ultimate goal with Up From Here is to shift and change our entire generation. Mm-hmm. And whether that be directly or sparking the change in multiple people where they could see what we're doing right. and try it themselves. But as long as that slowly starts to move around and help our culture. I'm excited. Right? I'm excited. Very I'm excited exciting. to see what you guys do. And I think one of the nice things about, you know, the younger generation or our generation and, and younger is that we have no problem. Well, I don't know what, what you guys are saying, but like we have no problem collaborating with each other. I think when I talk to some of the older heads or like I get like a, a idea of what the sentiment is, there is very much like, yeah. let me do, like I do my thing and they do their the, thing. The and gatekeeping too. Yeah. yeah. But for us, it's just kind of like, yo, like the only way forward is together. So like when you yeah. find your people, like move with them. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I'm in full agreement with you uh, in to play a little bit of devil's advocate and just, with my previous experiences yeah. recently, I I get it sometimes yeah. when they're closed off. Mm. Because letting any and everybody into your space, you don't know what energies you're letting in. Right. But that comes back to praying for whatever is best. No, right. So God, whoever is best. Because if this person is having whatever bad intentions or whatever, just, just remove them. But I've, I've had people that, them. you know, like I could have never seen what they did to me coming mm. ever in my lifetime. Mm. 
because I'm just like I see them at face value mm. and then it literally sometimes is like a switch in their head like you've now turned crazy and you're acting a certain type of way mm-hmm. and with the nature of what we do you encounter a lot of that yeah. especially in our industry why it is beyond me why <sighs> but it's just the nature of what we do and for an older head who never necessarily had the social media that gives different perspectives with how to handle those type of things mm-hmm. Nor did they maybe, they maybe didn't have a good support system Mm -hmm. or a good enough support system to help them, um, like go through those motions, right? right? They're going to naturally be closed off. That's another thing though. Like that's huge is actually having a support system behind you. Like in anything that you want to pursue, especially at like a big scale, like, yo, you need to have your people behind you because you actually can't do it. Anyone who says they're self-made is lying because you actually can't do it by yourself and you need your people to help you. That real support system. Yeah. Yeah. So in line with that, is there anybody you would like to thank? Because I know a lot of people, as you said, have helped you on your way up. Um... I want to thank God. I want to thank, oh my God, thank you. This is going to be like so long. <laughs> Just shout out to all the people, honestly, who have been brought into my life. I've thanked them privately, you know, yeah. and have, we've just had this beautiful yeah. synergy. Like it happens. And there's this quote that I sometimes say is like the best leverage is alignment. So sometimes I think about when I take one step, it feels like I'm taking 10 steps ahead. Right. Cause it's like, that alignment propels me so much further. I was thinking about that today when I was at the grocery store. I'm like, yo, for every one step I take, it's like 10 steps. Because right. right. I have that alignment and the, the leverage behind that. And it's God right. at the end of the day, yeah. you know? So when you find your thing, just do your thing and just trust that it'll work out. It's going to be effing terrifying. <laughs> You're going to be friggin' scared. Right. Yeah. 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 But, but just it, do it It anyway. takes you doing it. You just got to do it and go through everything and yeah. see if that's really what you want. And be like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm still alive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still alive. It's okay. I didn't think yeah. I was going to make it. But yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Even, even after I got cyberbullied and yeah. everyone was like, yeah. F her, she's stupid. What the hell is she talking about? It's a culture. Yeah. I'm still alive. Yeah. Right. And people are still coming in and re- like today, Know Your Caribbean reposted one of one of my, my clips from In We Blood. I was like, oh my gosh, like that's amazing. Right. Her platform, right. she has 284,000 followers on her Instagram and awesome. she literally took one of the clips from TikTok and just posted it. And she was like, thank you. And had her own little thing in the caption. It was right. like, thank you so much in blood podcast for starting this discussion. Like, and I'm like, Amazing. Oh my goodness. So like I said, you're just putting in the reps and being consistent and right. you'll start to see the fruits of your labor. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And you know, before we close out in line with that one, um, a line of thinking is you should always be putting your best foot forward, even though like what you're talking about getting in there and getting your hands dirty and figuring it out. Mm hmm. You should always be putting your best foot forward because if you keep posting consistent content, right? And let's just say you start in January 2024 and you're posting consistently every single week, maybe twice a week, and you're not really getting the best traction, right? And you post something in April that doesn't blow up until June. Mm -hmm. But between April and June, if you haven't been consistent and whatnot, when that one post blows up in June, all of these people, because the algorithm is now pushing it out to everybody, right. when all these people now see in We Blood or whoever you are, they'll say, oh, okay, this is wicked. Yeah. Where's the other content? Yep. Yeah. If you haven't been consistent now, that potential customer or whatever you want to call it is now gone. Right. You know? And that that's an important thing to understand as any creator. Just keep consistent with what you do. And one day that one clip will go viral yep. sure. and everything else will flourish because of that, yeah. you know? So, you know, I think, I would, not, I think this was an amazing conversation. Yeah. I loved everything you spoke about. And again, it's refreshing to see what you're doing. So we just want to say thank you on behalf of up from here podcast. Yes. We have a gift for you, but <laughs> it's not here yet. <laughs> the printer is still doing his thing, <laughs> but we're going to give you a, a up from here t-shirt to, you know, just, I'm Take excited. Keep Thank you so, so much. No problem. We'll we'll give that to you when uh when it's done. Yeah. And uh, thank you for having me. It's been really nice to be here in this yeah. awesome studio. And again, yeah, I wish you guys all the best with Up From Here. I know that it can help people. And so I'm excited for you guys to start getting all those message for sure. messages. Yes, thank you so much. Now where can they find you? Um on Instagram at Keybees, K E Y B E E S. And for In We Blood on Instagram, it's at in we blood <laughs> underscore. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you, Kiana. And this was another episode 
of the Up From Here podcast. We out. Peace.